Well, guys, I'm freaking pissed off today. Why? Well, uh, so I basically recorded this video earlier, and uh, just because I've just moved again, I'm actually back in the U.S. now. Of course, I didn't have my microphone set up properly, and I go to edit the fucking video, and uh, there's no audio. And so I'm now looking at this video, uh, thinking to myself, well, shit, I just popped two edibles, and now I have to re-record a 10-minute YouTube video on systems design. So uh, this should go really well, and uh, I'm hoping it does. And let's get into it. But before we do, I should probably quickly announce that uh, I guess we've just reached the one-year anniversary of the channel. So I'd like to thank everyone for their subscription and watching and just in general being very supportive. You guys are great in the comments, and it's clear that everyone's taking this very seriously and following along and interviewing themselves. So thanks again for all the support. Let's get into this video so I can finish this before I get high. Alrighty, welcome back everybody. I've got the iPad on my lap. I just deleted all the annotations and markings that I did with it before, which is great. And uh, let's go ahead and start talking about this video so that uh, I can get it out before I forget what replication is. So basically to start, we have this concept of single leader replication. So in the past couple of videos, we talked about what replication is, why we might need it, and also synchronous versus asynchronous replication. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume we're generally using asynchronous replication because synchronous replication generally speaking is not very practical. There are some scenarios where you do need to do it if you have to ensure that you can never have a stale read, but I'd say 99% of the time you're probably not replicating synchronously. So let's go ahead and assume that every time I write a dotted line with an arrow, such as this one here, that means asynchronous replication. So what is single leader replication? Well, it's known as a replication schema which basically means that it's a way of sending writes to the database and then basically reading from it later. So we've got our client over here and it's going to perform a write to our leader database. So the point of the leader is that all writes, no matter who is sending them, have to go to our leader database. However, we also have many follower databases. As you can see, we've got one here, we've got one here, and basically as they asynchronously receive writes from the leader, any other client, including the original writer, such as this guy over here, can perform a read from them. And the same client can perform a read from this database down here. It can perform a read from the leader itself. So again, it gives us a lot more opportunities to increase our read throughput. So let's actually go into a breakdown of what single leader replication achieves for us. So basically there is a couple of benefits and then we'll break those down a little bit more even. So basically number one, most importantly, is increased durability. We have many copies of our data now, and it means that if I were to take a nuke and go nuke one of our data centers, we still have a few other copies of that data, which is great. Additionally, we also have increased read throughput. This is a result of what I showed over here. So in this case, as opposed to having just, you know, normal read throughput from the leader itself, we're also adding two followers, which gives us three times as much read throughput, which is great. And it's basically for free, right? All we have to do is just add a couple of extra databases, which are asynchronously reading writes in the background. So it's pretty easy to go and extend our system to support single leader replication. So let's look at a couple of failure scenarios because the entire point of replication, aside from increasing read throughput, and sometimes, but not in this case, increasing write throughput, is to basically make sure that in the event of failures, we still have a working system. So let's look at a couple of these. So one type of failure scenario is our follower goes down, right? Let me zoom in here so we don't get distracted. And so let's say we have one follower right here and I go ahead and trip over some wire and now I've pulled the plug on it. So pulled, plug, here we go. So now we're down one less follower. Let's imagine that right before the follower went down, we know that it's seen all writes up to position 50 in our replication log, right? So we have this concept of a log that can just be stored on disk, and that log is being sent basically from the leader to all the followers, right? And so we can actually keep track on every single follower what the last position that they've seen on the replication log is. And so let's say this guy goes down and we know that it's at position 50 right over here. Let's now say though that eventually I realize that I pulled the plug out on this thing, I get up, you know, I put a band-aid on my knee because I tripped, and then uh, we go ahead and see that, hey, the leader's at position 70. Well, now what the leader can actually do is just go ahead and send writes from 51 to 70 all the way to our basically newly revived follower. And then he can be caught back up. And so what's great now is that this guy is back up to date after only a little bit of time. 
So when a follower does go down in a single leader replication situation, this is super easy to deal with, happens all the time, to be expected. On the other hand, when a leader goes down, we've got many, many challenges to deal with. So let's discuss basically three different scenarios of things that can go wrong when a leader goes down, and uh, we'll kind of explain why this is such a big deal in a single leader replication setup. So let's look at scenario one over here in the top left. So I'll even zoom in on it for us. So basically, let's imagine that uh, we've got one follower over here, and he thinks that the leader is dead, right? Because maybe just the network connection between the leader and follower is down, hence this X right here. Well, it's possible actually that the follower just has bad internet. As you can see, our other follower is criticizing him because the truth of the matter is the leader could still be up and running and there might just be an issue communicating between the leader and the follower. And so if a follower were to think the leader is down, it might want to replace it somehow with a new leader, but the reality of the situation is it's really hard to actually be sure that that's the right thing to do because of the fact that you know the network is asynchronous. We're not actually sure when the leader is going to communicate with the follower next, so it's hard to be sure that the leader is down. So that's one problem already, and we're going to touch upon you know probably many videos later how we can actually fix something like that, but it's definitely not easy and it's going to require a lot more thinking. So problem number two is this. You know, you think, oh, just because I have single leader replication, that you're never going to have any lost rights, right? Every right goes to the leader, and then eventually it's going to be propagated right back to the followers. So every single right is eventually going to every one of the followers. We're never going to lose any rights, right? Well, not necessarily. Because let's say we've got a leader who on, you know, our replication log, the last right that it wrote on that log was 80. And remember that those rights are being propagated asynchronously to the followers. So if this guy gets right number 80 and basically goes down because someone pulls the plug on it, and then our follower has only seen up to right 70 in the replication log, well, now we've basically taken rights 71 to 80 and just said they don't exist. And so, you know, these could actually be valuable rights. You know, this could be someone's financial data. This could be my message to a baddie over Tinder, anything like that. Now all of a sudden, you know, it's just gone, it's completely in the void, and that right that you thought was valid no longer exists anymore. So even though this leader is, you know, basically, you know, we've taken our follower and we've promoted him to leader one, the issue is that doesn't actually have all of the rights that we thought it would, and so now we have a data integrity issue. So that's the second issue. And I'm, I'm still not even offering any solutions at this point, because frankly, it's really, really hard to offer solutions to this, and so we'll discuss that in a second. So now our third scenario is this. Let's imagine we have this original leader over here. It goes down. We elect a follower as our new leader prime. Now it loves being the leader for sure. And then all of a sudden, as if coming back from the dead, our original leader is back and now we have two leaders. What is this known as? It is called split brain. So let me go ahead and write that down. And so split brain is when our system is only supposed to have one leader, but due to basically just, you know, issues with certain nodes coming back on, certain nodes going down, we end up having two leaders. And so now if we have a second guy, not only does this guy here not know who to write to, but our second guy might write to this right leader, and then the first guy might write to the left leader, and then they're both sending rights to all of the followers, and the followers are like, what the hell? Where are these rights coming from? Split brain clearly, if it were to happen, is a major data integrity issue, and you can be certain that one of those two leaders is going to have to get shut down or else chaos can ensue. So as you can see, clearly having a leader that does go down is a massively problematic situation. And truthfully, due to the fact that there's no guarantees on when you know a network message is going to get from a leader to a follower or a follower back to a leader, or from a follower to a follower, it's really, really hard to say, oh, I know for sure that this leader is down, and I know for sure that this node is the leader, right? You basically need something called this, distributed consensus. And so what distributed consensus is saying is that, you know, if we got a few database, oh my God, I'm terrible at drawing. If we have a few databases, let's say we've got three of them, it means that all three, even though they're not physically the same computer, are 100% sure not only of who the leader is, but whether it's up or it's down. So in this case, it would be leader and everyone agrees. 
And this concept, distributed consensus, is something that we're going to have to cover in detail, you know, a few videos down the line. But it is super important because basically without this concept of being able uh, to agree on some sort of consensus amongst multiple computers, we would basically have no setup for replication that allows us to ensure the correctness of our data. And that would obviously be super problematic. So I just wanted to show this off as a problem uh, to kind of set the stage for that uh, a few videos from now. But anyways, let's do a quick conclusion of single leader replication before we go on to our next videos and I can doze off. So number one is, like I mentioned, it's simple, right? If you already have a single database, turning that into a single leader replication setup is super easy. You just add followers. And it's also simple in the sense that if a follower goes down, you can either add a new follower and just restore it using the replication log, or you can bring back the old follower and again, restore it using the replication log. At the same time, uh, there is quite a bit more read throughput, right? If I'm in Chicago and then you've got a bunch of idiots who live in Australia for God knows what reason, they can easily access that data via a replica that is located closer to them, which is very important. At the same time, there are some downsides to single leader replication. We've touched already upon like the leader going down. And for now, let's assume that we do actually have a solution for the leader going down and that we can perform something known as a failover where we elect a new leader and things go well again. But even besides that, assuming we can figure out a way to elect a new leader, we do have this other problem, which is this. What if we want more write throughput? A lot of applications just have a ton of writes. And what I've only given you the option to do right now is get more read throughput. Because at the end of the day, you can have this type of setup, but what's going to happen is that your write throughput is limited to that one leader. And so ultimately what we need to end up doing is coming up with different types of replication schemas that are going to allow you to write to multiple different places. And by doing so, then we could increase our write throughput. So we're gonna talk about that in the next few videos and of course the problems that arise when we try and do things like that. And I'm looking forward to it guys. So have a great night. I will be doing the same and I'll see you in the next one.